Hello my friends and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta. Hope you guys are having a good day and enjoyed my other video. If you missed it, you will find it linked in the description below. But as always, I'm here with the latest news from the tech world from the last 24 or so hours as of the 11th of August. We've got quite a bit to get stuck into today, so I'm just going to get started right away. And we're going to begin with a couple of things from Intel, starting with Optane Persistent Memory. So what we have here is Intel have actually managed to set a brand new world record with their Optane Persistent Memory DAOS solution, which is Distributed Asynchronous Object Storage, or DAOS I suppose you could call it and it is now sitting at the top of the Virtual Institutes for IO's IO500 lists. And this was no small feat. The solution from Intel managed to best the world's best supercomputers and now ranks number one for file system performance. Now I do have a bit of a statement here from Gordon McFeeters, HPC Systems Administration Specialist at the Argonne Leadership Computing Facility, and they said, quote, the recent IO500 results for DAOS demonstrate the continuing maturity of the software's functionality enabled by a well-managed code development and testing process. The collaborative development program will continue to deliver additional capabilities for DAOS support in, uh, in support of Argonne's upcoming Exascale system Aurora. But that's not the only Intel thing I have for you today, my friends. I also have a Sysoff Sandra listing for Tiger Lake. So, this time around we have Apisag over on Twitter to thank for this, and he should be very familiar to you by this point. He is a very well-known well leaker over on Twitter, and what the Sysoff Sandra listing shows us that Apisag found is a very impressive base core clock speed for the 1115G4 i3 Tiger Lake processor, and as you can plainly see for yourself, it is a base core clock of 3 GHz. Compare this to an Ice Lake i3, the 1005G1, that only managed to hit 1.2 GHz as a base clock speed. So the leap from Ice Lake to Tiger Lake pretty much speaks for itself. Now obviously Tiger Lake will use the new Willow Cove architecture core, but of course it is still 10nm based, so this just goes to show you what some time in the oven will actually do to a new process the increase in base clock is very, very impressive. Now it is still a two core, four thread processor, and again uses uh, Willow Cove, but we do see some boost for L3 cache, and we are expecting, of course, the GPU to make use of XE graphics with 96 execution units. So, it's looking promising at least for Tiger Lake. The only thing that's a bit of a downer about this is the fact that it is only two cores, four threads. Two cores does seem a bit piddly, you know, as great as the base clock speed is, two cores, four threads is a bit of a... Mm, but obviously we'll have to wait and see how it does in the real world. Anyway, with that said, let's move on to our next topic for today, and we're going to have a couple of NVIDIA things to kick us off here. And... The first is regarding the GeForce RTX 30's launch. So basically what we have is according to tweaktown.com, NVIDIA's AIBs or board partners have confirmed that custom designs will be available at launch. And essentially what we're going to see happen here is that both the Founders Edition from NVIDIA and the custom designs will launch simultaneously. Now this obviously will mean that AIBs have had their mitts on RTX Ampere for quite some time and they are now ready for launch and the guys over at videocards.com have said that various AIBs have uh, reached out to them, sorry should I say, confirming that they do indeed have RTX 30 ready to go. So this is pretty nice, you know, more choice for the consumer is always good. Especially considering that the AOB designs will often have like different appearances and sometimes you'll get like the OC variants and stuff like that. So obviously we'll have to wait and see on the pricing and all that sort of stuff. But it is still nice to know that we will be seeing the Founders Edition and Custom Designs launching simultaneously. And speaking of the launch, we actually have a bit of an update about that next. 
So you may have seen our video that, well, one of the videos I should say that Paul and I put out yesterday where we discussed the tease that NVIDIA had for an upcoming event. Now, it just said the ultimate countdown with not really much else information, but obviously we all thought that it's going to be for RTX Ampere. And now we actually have a very interesting update to that. NVIDIA has officially announced that the event will take place on September the 1st, and it is going to be a GeForce event. Now obviously we don't know for a thousand percent sure that it's going to be for Ampere, but it has to be. Like There's, there's nothing else it can be. It is of course going to be hosted by the CEO Jensen Huang. Now the wording of this reveal is very, very interesting to me. Let's take a look at what they had to say. They said, quote, The ultimate countdown, 21 days, 21 years. Before we enter the future, join us to celebrate the biggest breakthroughs in PC gaming since 1999 and what comes next. They're essentially saying here that this is a leap on the level of the unified shader model which means that you don't have to have separate parts in the graphics card for, say, Vertex work. The unified model was revolutionary, and I don't say that, you know, just flippantly. That is massive. It was revolutionary. The unified model brought in the ability to run Compute on the GPU and even CUDA. So I don't think it's an understatement to say that that wasn't one of the most important things in the history of PC gaming. It changed computing forever. And it's a bigger breakthrough than ray tracing being able to run in real time. So it seems to me like they're promising that RTX Ampere is going to be a huge leap. Whether or not they're saying it's going to be on par with that, or better than that, or just a massive leap that's going to be bigger than what we saw with Turing. But either way, they seem to be very much hinting that something big is going to be revealed to us with RTX Ampere. Now obviously, I'm reading a lot into the wording here, but I do feel like the wording here is deliberate, and I think we can definitely safely say from this that it isn't just going to be Turing, but faster. It's going to have major new features. Obviously, it's going to have ray tracing and DLSS2 and all these improvements on the RT cores and all that. That's obviously going to be in there as well. But whatever these new features are, it seems NVIDIA are extremely confident that they are going to be a huge, huge leap. Whether or not they actually are, well, we'll obviously have to wait and see on that one. Obviously, we're going to have to wait 21 long days to find out what's going on. But it's nice to have a date at least. The 1st of September. It's not too bad. It's only a few weeks away. It'll be here before we know it. So let me know your thoughts, guys. What sort of announcement are you expecting from NVIDIA with Ampere? Do you think it's just going to be Ampere, uh, sorry, Turing, but faster? Do you think it's going to bring something huge to the table? Or something else? Let me know. Let me know. Anyway, for our final, final topic for today, I'm just going to discuss the PC port of Horizon Zero Dawn. Now, I will say this news has been really, really disappointing to me. I haven't actually picked up the PC version of Horizon Zero Dawn yet because I'm still playing through Ghost of Tsushima and I've still got finished control and I've got a, just an endless list of games to play. So I shouldn't really be spending time playing a game that I've already completed when it came out on the PS4. But I, I am going to be getting it because it's one of my favorite games. But sadly, as I'm sure you've noticed, there has been a lot of unhappy customers about the performance of the game on PC and the bad state of the PC port. Now, Gorilla have actually offered a statement on the state of the PC port, and they said, quote, We have been monitoring all of our channels and are aware that some players have been experiencing crashes and other technical issues. Please know that we are investigating your reports as our highest priority. We appreciate those who have already taken the time to report their issues on Steam, Reddit, or via our website. If you are still encountering crashes or bugs, please continue to use those spaces or refer to our FAQ if you're unsure of how to proceed. Your reports are and already have been incredibly helpful for our teams. Thank you for your patience. As we continue to investigate issues, we'll update you all as soon as we have more news. This is just a real, real shame for me because at the moment, reviews for the game are sitting at mixed. And it literally is just because of the state of the PC port. It's just honestly sad how common this actually is for console ports to just be absolute garbage at launch on PC. I had hoped that maybe we wouldn't see that this time, given how great Horizon itself is, but sadly that wasn't to be. 
Now hopefully Gorilla will fix all of these issues in a timely manner. I'm hoping that within a couple of weeks at best, you know, we, we see an update that fixes all of this and everything runs smooth and there's no more issues other than the odd hiccup, you know. Every game has crashes or issues or just, you know, throws its toys out of the pram every now and again and, and decides that it just wants to lock up your entire PC. That's always fun. But, you know, that's an anomaly. You don't want it to happen all the time. So hopefully they get these issues sorted because it, it just seems a shame to me for this to spoil a great game. And I was really looking forward to playing this again on PC because it's absolutely stunning on PS4 and I just was looking forward to playing it on PC. You know, resolution cranked, everything maxed, proper frame rate. Sounds good to me, but sadly we can add this to the long, long list of console versions that were just not very well ported. Fingers and toes crossed, at least, that we will see these issues resolved quickly, but of course, time will have to tell on that one. Anyway guys, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.